Wrocław has long been the largest and culturally dominant city in Silesia and is today Lower Silesia's capital. The history of Wrocław starts at a crossroad. It was one of the centers of the Duchy and then Kingdom of Poland and briefly in the first half of the 13th century the center of half of the divided Kingdom of Poland. German settlers arrived in increasing numbers after the 1241 Mongol invasion and Wrocław eventually became part of the Kingdom of Bohemia. After the War of Austrian Succession, the city and region were added to Prussia and later part of the German Empire. After World War II, Wrocław and most of Silesia were transferred to Poland. Welcome to Poland Daily Culture. I'm John Carter. I'm Polina Otterstein. And Łukasz Chudzic. Nice to meet you. Today we're here in Wrocław Old Town Square and Łukasz is going to be our guide for, uh, for the day. Um, so, maybe you could... Uh, what are you going to show us? Uh, well, what's going to be the first place? We'll see the essentials of the city. We are at the moment at the Old Town, at the main market square. The, one of the most beautiful and biggest main, medieval main market squares in Poland and even in Europe. And so yeah, we'll find a little bit about the history and yeah, all that's beautiful here. Fantastic. So maybe we could start off by you, you telling us a little something about the sort of foundings of the city and how it all uh, yeah began, maybe a kind of thousand years or so ago. So it, it actually started like almost exactly ten, t a thousand years ago. Uh, the first like mentions of the city are from year 1000. Uh, the bishopric was established here, so like the main place for the church administration for the area. It's the first time the city name is written. And in the beginning we say it was ruled by the Polish dynasty, so it's part of Poland. Uh, it was like this for about 300 years, the Piast dynasty uh, was, was ruling here. Then, when the last member of this dynasty died, they gave the lands to the Czechs. And, uh, the Czech kingdom started to rule here from 14th century to 16th century. It was for about 200 years. Then the uh, Czech Kingdom was incorporated by the Austrians, the Habsburg uh, dynasty. And, uh, 200 years again, another change. And, uh, the country that we used to know as Prussia, it was the country that unified uh, Germany. And, uh, they started to rule here. They were ruling until 1871. Unification of Germany. City basically didn't change a lot. It was just the name uh, of the country that changed. And it was German till the end of the Second World War. It's very important to remember that during the Second World War and before it, there was a German city, German administration, and a Polish community living here still, but under the German uh, rule. And after the war, everything changed. The city from being almost 100% German became almost 100% Polish. And this was the biggest change in its history, because uh, never before there was a full exchange of population here. And yeah, it was basically a decision of Big Free. Uh, mainly Stalin decided that this will be a part of in, uh, Poland again, we might say after 600 years almost, and they're being outside of the Polish rule and on and on. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So uh, maybe you could tell us a little something about where exactly we are. And... So this is the uh, main market square. This is where uh, the, all the important administration things for the city uh, were located. The building just behind us uh, is the old town hall. Uh, its history starts in the 13th century. The oldest part is the one in the, in the middle where the tower is located. Um, the building was uh, evolving with the city. The city was growing and we got a new parts, the Radic. What's interesting, the most important part of this building, in my opinion, is the uh, restaurant that's uh, right there uh, downstairs. Some say it is the oldest restaurant in Europe. What is it called? It's called Piwnica Świdnicka, the cellar of Świdnica. Uh, Świdnica is a city nearby Wrocław that was famous for beer they were brewing. It was so famous that for about uh, three, four hundred years it was exported to cities like Wrocław, Kraków, Toruń, but also to Prague and Venice. It was one of the best beers you can get in this part of Europe at the moment. And in Wrocław, it was the only place where you can drink beer from outside of the city. So you got monopoly of brewing and serving beer, and it was the only exception right here. If anyone famous would come to the city, they would go there. You like Chopin, like Copernicus, like Gitter, they all went there. Um, and now it's a little bit problematic as it's closed. Um, the last Ooh, when, did, when did the restaurant so close? The problem was with the, not with the owner, the owner is the city, uh, but the person who was running it, he forgot to pay his rent for the last nine years. 
so yeah. you know it's a, they, long time. it's a bit long time so they went into the court and they won uh, they're looking actually now for a new person to run it so maybe it will be um, someone who would take care of it mm -hmm. okay let's check out the other parts Okay then, so, Wilkash, maybe you could tell us a little something about uh, how the war, uh, Second World War, affected Wrocław. As Zili was defended at all costs by the, uh, by the Nazis uh, against the Soviet forces, and it was destroyed about 75%. I'll tell you a little bit more about the defense of the city. We'll get the map and I'll show you how it worked. Sure. But uh, if you go to south or west of Wrocław, those areas were destroyed almost completely. This part of the city where we are right now is destroying about 50%. So some of the buildings, if you look around, will be original, but some of them are just uh, reconstructions. Mm -hmm. and, um, I will show you in a moment uh, exact buildings that were made like 10 years after the war, but they look like the original ones. And uh, the important thing after the war, uh, I was mentioning before that people who arrived here, they were coming from all around Poland, but about 10% of new citizens here came from one place, the city of Lwów. Uh, this is a city that, uh, after the war, became part of the Soviet Union. So many of Poles were forced to leave. And they were coming here to Wrocław, as it was an empty place where they started a new life. They brought some things with them. One of them is the statue that you can see right, uh, right behind us. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a city that, he used to sit at one of the squares in, in Lwów. And, uh, now he's here in Wrocław. It's Aleksander Fredro, Polish writer. Uh, you can compare him to Moliere, basically. It's like a comedy. Very, you learn it at high schools usually. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, they brought some national library and something that we call Panorama Radzławicka, which is like the, the huge painting. It's one of the biggest panoramic paintings in, in, uh, in the world. What year was it painted in? It was painted in the middle of the uh, 19th century, uh, mainly by uh, Cossack. And it's during the huge battle of Radzławice, which was important for Poland, in, um, like morally, I'd say. It was the battle that we won um, against Russians. Uh, in the end of 18th century, just before we lost our independence for about 123 years. And imagine when it was brought here uh, just after the war, it was not shown publicly for the next almost 50 years. And the communists were not hmm, agreeing to show it publicly, as it was showing Polish soldiers winning with Russians. It was uh -huh. back then politically incorrect. Bad propaganda. And just at the end of 80s, when there was the so-called Carnival of Solidarność, People were feeling more freedom and they were trying to break free. They allowed to, to put it back for public use. Uh, it's one of those things you need to see in Wrocław, I think. So uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty worth seeing. Oh, by the way, the buildings I was mentioning, they're just behind me. Those buildings were around there, they were made in the 50s. They are not original buildings that survived the war. And, uh, they are just Reconstruct reconstructions. And uh, most of them are reconstructed in a way that they looked in the 18th century, not right behind the war. The new owners of the city they didn't want to bring back the Prussian uh, view of the city, the German way. It was more Polish. Uh, the mm -hmm. neo-Renaissance was used um, as it. And this is the idea during the communist times that the Zamość, the city in east of Poland, a parallel of Renaissance, should be like the new, uh, new way to bring up the cities back to life. OK, so you're saying this is more authentically Polish architecture then, or...? Yes, you might say that. Uh, they found some, uh, let's say, illustrations of the city from uh, back in the days. Because Prussia was the, um, like a country that was a symbol of oppression for yeah. Polish people. It's a Kulturkampf, the, the politics of Bismarck and other things. So, yeah, for new owners of the city, they don't want to bring those, like, hard memories. They want to show and underline uh, this is something different right now. Yeah. Yeah, in the place where the Frederick statue was standing, there was the, one of the Kaisers before. They chose the like a soldier or the king, we got the poet. You know, something more romantic, let's say. Yeah, uh, and maybe there is something sort of about that in, in mm -hmm. Wrocław itself, which is mm -hmm. a little bit more kind of romanticized rather than militarized. Yes, it? yes. Well, of course, and, um, after the war, and, uh, it was quite difficult to live in the city, as it is so destroyed. Uh, we might call those who arrived here afterwards pioneers, uh, bringing the city back to life for about 30 years. Those buildings there were finished in the 50s, 10 years after the end of the war. So imagine just a rubble here for 10 years of your life. It's a long time, right? Yeah, right. And the only part that's fully original is actually right here. Every single building on this side survived. And okay. usually people, when they see this gray building right here, they will be like, really? 
this this one survived. It looked like the communist style building is like unfortunately in the, here. And so yeah, this is one of those German modernism style uh, buildings uh, that were made in the 30s. But You've you mentioned there was a gas station over here? Yes, there was even a gas station here in the 20s. It was like the first gas station in the city. So you build it in the middle of the city, right? Where all the first cars would be uh, used. Up till like 80s, there were trams going through here. And up till 1997, uh, we got parking lots, like uh, pedestrian crossings around here. And everything changed uh, after the visit of the Pope. When the city was prepared for it, they decided to make it beautiful pedestrian area. It's much better. It's uh, filled with life right now. And yeah, we can use it. Splendid. Let's go and explore some more sure. of it. Sure, please.